thank you for coming. I understand we've got uh, uh, we've got some Roadster owners in the crowd tonight. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. All right. Great. Uh, thank you. Thanks for your longtime support of Tesla, and also some Model S owners. Yeah. Thank you too for your support of Tesla. You've helped make Hong Kong one of the uh, fastest expanding markets uh, for Tesla worldwide. So I'm John McNeil, the president of Worldwide Sales, and I know that you came here to see uh, Elon Musk, so let me, without any further delay, <laughs> Oh, no way. My goodness. No way. Hey, welcome, everybody. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for coming. Um, and uh, I know there's a number of uh, long-time Tesla supporters in the crowd, so uh, thanks for your faith from the beginning. Um, you know, from Roaster, Model S, and everything. And um, so I'm just going to tell you about uh, what our plans are in, in Hong Kong, and, um, uh, and yeah, it's, we, we got big plans. So uh, as, as I think you, you may know, the, the goal of Tesla is to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport. So to do whatever we can to, uh, to have, the, have a sustainable future happen sooner rather than later. Um, so uh, we started off with uh, the Roadster back in 2008. So low volume, obviously high price. Now with the Model S and X, which are mid price, mid volume, and then in about two years we expect to have the Model Three, which is a lower price, higher volume car. Um, so the the overarching goal, though, is just to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport, um, and uh, you know, and to help other companies do that as well, which is why we open sourced our patents last year. Model S. Um, we, we, uh, we tried very hard to make an electric car be the best car. Um, the, it was, well, it was really important because previously people had the idea of an electric car as being like a golf cart, like something that was slow and ugly and low range. Uh, we had to show that an electric car could actually be the best car. It could be fast, it could be great, have great handling, look good, have long range. Um, th this was very important to, to uh, break them all to um, get rid of the idea that an electric car is not a good car. Um, and the results were, I think, quite, quite good. 90% uh, of owners would, would buy the Model S again. We won car of the year, and the consumer report said it was the best car that they've ever tested. So, <laughs> I'm sure you guys know that first time. <laughs> So we start off with, with safety and achieving uh, five stars across the board. Um, the Model S is, still has the highest uh, safety rating of any car I've tested. So it's uh, doing well in that front. Uh, we have a lo longer crumble zone than any car, in any gasoline car because there's no engine in the front. Uh, very rigid cabin and a low center of gravity because of the battery pack being in the floor pan. And then it's also all-wheel drive. It can make it to 100 kilometers in under three seconds. Um, it has a range of almost 500 kilometers. So these were all really important characteristics to achieve in an electric car, to show that an electric car could be a real substitute for a gasoline car. Um, and then uh, with over the updates, the car keeps improving over time. So instead of, the, of buying a car and having the software be static, and, and unchanging, that this would actually improve over time. And then with autopilot, which um, <laughs> I know you don't actually have it. So, <clears throat> I'm meeting with the government tomorrow, hopefully. <laughs> software updates um, and, and we'll, we'll take it as far as the sensor suite will allow uh, so I think which, which is actually pretty far and that's combining the, the camera the radar the sonar and the GPS um, and it's, it's worth maybe uh, just showing like some of the key statistics um, in, in 2004 Tesla was just five people um, now we're almost 
15,000. Um, and five years ago, we were making about 600 cars a year, and now it's uh, 50,000 cars a year. So it's it's good progress, I think. Um, and uh, and I'm, I'm part of the fact that we we saved over 150 million liters of gasoline. Um, so it's. Uh, so in terms of where we are in, in Greater China, the, we have 15 stores in, in seven major cities, uh, several hundred superchargers, um, and even more destination chargers, and we're opening up in Macau towards the end of this year. Um, I actually think um, Hong Kong will probably be the leading city in the world for electric cars. And, um, and uh, yeah, so I think it's, it's going to be really um, a leading light uh, because uh, I, I think it will actually have more EVs per capita than any, any other uh, city, uh, which means we'll pioneer figuring out how to do uh, charging, um, how to handle the uh, large number of electric cars on the grid, uh, all of these issues, um, which will then be a good example for the rest of the world. I think Hong Kong is the perfect city for electric vehicles. It's that sense of movement, that sense of dynamism. The Hong Kong people, they want to go everywhere fast. Tesla is really taking off. It just makes sense. The number of Teslas on the street I've seen, it just kind of double, triple. Now we see easily a dozen Teslas on the roads every single day.
the pace of the uh, supercharging network uh, expansion cannot keep up with the growth of the new neighbors. This, we can see that soon will become the, an obstacle for passive growth in Hong Kong. So how do you think you can overcome this challenge? Thank you. Sure. Um, what, so I, that's a great, a great point. Um, so in, in my meeting tomorrow with, with the government, we're actually going to be discussing this exact subject. Um, we want to try to um, upgrade uh, some of the, the, the public charging stations to higher power um, and, and make them available to other power companies as well. Uh, but we really want to work with the government um, and offer our technology for upgrading the, the public charging spots. Because my understanding is that there is maybe as many as 800 or even 1,000 uh, public charging spots, but they're low power. Um, so we've got to, I think the right solution is to upgrade them to higher power um, and also to uh, have the, the regulations, the building regulations, um, ideally require that if, if somebody requests charging in their building, that the, there's an obligation to provide it. Um, because in, in the long run, the best way to charge um, your car is to charge it the same place you charge your phone. Um, if you have to go to a third, lo a third location, that's generally undesirable. Um, most convenient is where your phone is charged, that's where your car should be charged. Except for long distance driving, of course. <laughs> um, but that's the, that's the basic idea. So regulatory changes, and then pro and then providing uh, whatever technology and support that we can from a Tesla standpoint to the government to upgrade the, the public charging stations. Thanks. I think over here. Hi, Elon. My name is Mark Whit Johnson. I'm a roadster and mobile SFM. Um, firstly, before my question, I'd just like to say in the last five years, we've had George. Come. We've had Jerome come, and but today is really special. Thank you so much for making this trip. Well, well thank you for supporting Tesla. <coughs> so, um, as well as the road spin Model S, I've got a Model X on reservation. So, of course, the question is, what is the plan for right hand drive Model Xs, and when are we going to see them? Um, <coughs> well, the, the plan is to, well, for right hand drive uh, Xs, is we should be starting production of those around the middle of this year. So hopefully the summer is when we should be uh, delivering the right hand drive access. Yeah. Hello. Um, Sorry, it's always fun to tell where the. Oh, we're here. Oh, boy. By the sign. All right. Uh, John Bauer, I'm here with Charge to Hong Kong, which is Hong Kong's charity representing EVs. Uh, again, thank you for coming. Specific question about autopilot. One of the most successful campaigns online for um, in the last couple of years was for Blend Tech. I don't know if you saw that one. Uh, can you blend it? Uh, the simple demonstrations of, of the technology. I've, I've been sort of waiting with bated breath to see a cascade of good news about autopilot and the situations it's saved. And um, all we've seen has been the disaster movies. Um, is there something to share? Or, or, because for every bad news, we need five times more good news mm. to, to balance it psychologically. <coughs> is there anything that, that Tesla could be sharing? Um, well, I mean, we, there, there, is, there are a lot of um, sort of interventions that occur um, that, that we're aware of, but we, 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 we haven't really asked customers if we could share their, to share their information. Um, I'm so, sure many of them would agree. Actually, it's a good point. You know, yeah. We don't want to put any pressure, like no pressure, <laughs> if you want to share it. Um, yeah, maybe that would, if we can sort of ask people in kind of a really low pressure way. Well, there was that one in Seattle, which is, yeah. right. has had, you know, each of us, I think, has had it on repeat playback for at least a week. Yeah, but there, and there are many, I mean, there are thousands more, so um, that's a good idea. Maybe we should just ask. That's the point. I mean, yeah. whether there yeah. are case studies or if you could do aggregated statistics, uh, and, I'm, and I'm sure I, for one, would volunteer if, if I was ever saved by my models. Yes, yeah. actually, the statistics, putting something out that I think is um, framed in a statistical way, and maybe the, the right who, mm. and I was just actually recently saw um, a um, just a, a histogram of, of uh, for example, the lane position for autopilot versus non-autopilot. And the, the probability distribution is much tighter if you're on autopilot than, than for if, if it's manual driving. Um, and it's actually remarkable how much people vary in their lane if it's manual driving. 
quite a lot. <laughs> um, so it's, I think maybe releasing that would be a good idea just to show like, look, it's, it's actually a tighter pro, um, position distribution on autopilot than on autopilot. Well, what I can share on the record is that in the few short weeks that we had autopilot, uh, I was arriving much more refreshed. Yeah, it, 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 is, a, it, it, it's, it is a big workload reduction. I mean, in fact, the reason we called autopilot was to, to have people think of it in the same way that people think of an, air, air, um, an airplane autopilot, which is not to say that the, the pilot can abdicate responsibility or go to sleep. Um, that would be concerning. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, but rather that it's a workload reduction. Um, so just it, it um, you know, mentally makes, you, makes it easier to fly the plane and in the same way to drive the car uh, with the auto steer function. Uh, uh, on a personal note, I did complete the police class one driving test a while okay. back for safety, and, and I can absolutely say that it requires much less concentration, and I'm much more aware of the situation around me, and much less stressed by traffic jams and so on. So I want it back. Uh, we'll, we're doing our best. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll take one more question, and then I hand it over to John. Okay, okay right, right, sure. Far away. <laughs> Excellent car, the service center, and the post delivery service was excellent class lead for Hong Kong. But Tesla lately, you have to wait three to four months to make an appointment to get your car serviced. Three to six weeks for minor parts, minor repairs. And by, if you should get in an accident, you have to go to the only place in town that takes months with outrageous pricing. How do we get back to class leading service? It's a great, it's a great and very fair question. And quite frankly, this is the reason why I'm here, because the second part of my job title is service. And uh, we have outgrown our space uh, sort of months and months ago. Uh, and so Elon just mentioned, uh, we're in the process of building up over 100,000 square foot sales, or service and delivery center. Uh, and that, that capacity can't come online fast enough, quite frankly, because we need the space to do the work. Uh, and also, we need to uh, we need to change the way we're doing work, which was is something that we're gonna uh, we're gonna start that process uh, in advance of the space uh, being online. But it is uh, it's it's a situation where demand for the car grew more quickly than we had forecasted, 
And so therefore, cars in market grew more quickly than we had forecasted, and we got behind on our capacity. And so now we're in uh, catch up and get ahead mode. Mm -hmm. And that's really our, uh, that's our mission here over the next couple of months, is to get ahead so we return world-class service to, uh, to Tesla uh, in Hong Kong. And the measure of that will be, in one, in one sense, how satisfied you are as an owner, but we're gonna look at uh, the percentage of repairs that happen same day, uh, because that's a big aim of ours, to make this kind of invisible in your life. Uh, if anything goes wrong, uh, we don't want you to be without your car uh, for more than that day, if possible. So thanks for the question, it's a fair question. Yeah, right here. So the question was, uh, some environmentalists question uh, Tesla's uh, use of lithium in the battery. Um, and actually, uh, over time, we're actually using less and less uh, lithium. The battery, um, really the folks that are, are engineering our batteries are, are, are advancing very, very quickly. You see that with the range, but you also see that with the amount of lithium that's used in the batteries. And over time, we're trying to have the lowest impact that we can on each area of our business. So we, yeah, we are we are exploring new forms of technology, and in fact, the the battery in the '90 and the '70 is a new uh, is a new battery technology uh, that we've released. So yeah, that's an important part of our.